Wait. Oh. Oh. Hooray. After some goofiness from the banana guards, we get to see a new monster that's terrorizing the Candy Kingdom, a giant sloth-like green banana creature that spits hot fudge and consumes other bananas. We also see the collective resting chamber of the banana guards, which I gotta say is a rather bleak sight. While Princess Bubblegum bonded with her banana guards and recognized them as their own individuals all the way back in the episode The Thin Yellow Line, they still all sleep in a compartmentalized, space-efficient barrack with only a single shelf for their belongings. The setup has a very collectivized and militaristic feel to it. But hey, I guess they at least get some pretty ceiling decorations of the solar system. A silly detail of note, apparently a lot of the banana guards sleep while holding a regular banana. The banana guard grabbing beast was anticipated, as Finn and Jake were once again dressed up as banana guards performing a stealth operation, one that ends in failure due to Finn's guilt over having killed Fern in the previous episode, which in universe time occurred a whole month ago. The ordeal left some very strong trauma on our hero that prevents him from slaying foes like he normally would. Earlier that morning, at the 33rd Annual Royal Banana Guard postseason apology game, where Finn was channeling his inner Amarao, Peebubs and Finn discussed the troubled lad's trauma. Although it was Bubblegum's questionable voice recognition software that led to the final killing blow, Finn doesn't seem to place any blame on PB whatsoever. The prosthetic arm doesn't even come up in the conversation. Finn probably acknowledges that eventually he would have had to slay Fern anyway, even if the voice command functions worked properly. I think the inevitability of the situation at that particular moment is a huge factor as to why Finn is so tormented. Today doesn't have to have this kind of... finality! And yet, finality there was. In the end, there really was only enough room for one Finn and Ooh, and now Finn has to accept that fact. The conversation with PB is kept from being too dark by doing a complete 180 in terms of tone. Death is no laughing ma- <laughs> Apparently, it's not hard to talk about death if the beings that were viciously eviscerated were sentient bananas and you could insert the oldest form of slapstick comedy into the situation. <laughs> Oh, adventure time, you and your ever so delightfully morbid sense of humor. So Finn's psychological trauma triggers him to see and hear Fern, who repeatedly, and sometimes in a ghostly manner, reminds Finn that Fern is him. I'm you! My interpretation of what's happening here is that part of Finn's lasting trauma is caused by him imagining himself in Fern's shoes. And let's not forget that Fern's shoes did used to be Finn's own shoes after all. Finn is frightened to kill because somebody who was trying to be good may still turn toward evil, and even Finn himself is not exempt from such a scenario. I mean, such a scenario literally occurred to one of the alternate Finns. The thought of killing Fern reminds Finn that perhaps one day he might be on the other end of the sword, and thus questions of motives and redemption arise, and that's where the hesitation comes from. I don't care why you're doing this, or if you have a, a tragic past. I don't care! I'm hard like that! While I would have loved for the episode to dig in even deeper into these themes, The Wild Hunt still explores the concept of taking life on a far grittier and dark level than I would expect from an all-ages cartoon. This episode isn't concerned with the morality behind killing at all. The episode's entire setup establishes that sometimes such an act is necessary. That straightforwardness was actually a bit jarring for me, but it was also refreshing. In fiction, it's common to explore themes relating to whether a life should be taken or not. Here, those themes happen to be irrelevant. We zip past that topic and right into the next step. When taking a life is deemed necessary, how does the mind cope with conducting such an act? As I already said, this is a topic I would not expect to find in an all-ages cartoon, especially in such a candid manner, but Adventure Time is not afraid to venture there. What the heck is my problem?! And then of course, Huntress Wizard shows up, and she's so fucking cool! I love her! She gives us yet another reminder that the premise of the episode takes a de facto approach that some life does have to be eliminated. I'm hunting it. It's an invasive species that's been destroying the local ecosystem with its nasty hot fudge. It's something that we often take for granted in the land of Ooh. Creatures and people are slain all the time, and the landscape is often littered with objects that evoke the concept of memento mori. 
While sometimes it may seem like Adventure Time takes the subject of death lightly, at least on the superficial level, it really doesn't, at least not when it counts. Huntress Wizard tries to console Finn by telling him Fern was headed toward the path of evil and he had to be taken out, though her wording was a bit on the callous side. Sounds like he was a bad version of yourself that you had to destroy in order to become an even tighter version of yourself. Does that sound about right? You probably shouldn't mix in hitting on somebody when you're trying to console them, and also I think Huntress Wizard has been watching a bit too much anime. Speaking of anime, a few key moments of the fight were rather reminiscent of it. I wonder if the animation for this episode got outsourced to a different studio than usual. It was very clean and awesome animation on HW. It was great. Now then, Coupe de Grassi! Hmm, wouldn't pronouncing Coupe de Grasse correctly be potential for like a silly Graspin related pun? Or perhaps Coupe de Grassi? Or is it too soon since Fern died last episode and all? Anyway, Finn still can't do it. He still can't deliver the final blow, and then get some hot fudge in the nads. Someone got hit in the boing lines! Hit in the boing lines! Boing lines! Boing lines! Somebody got hit in them! Good thing he's had practice with standing the heat in the past with Flame Princess, I guess. So HW puts herself in harm's way, which forces Finn to try and fool himself past his mental block. Finn projects the image of Fern in need of rescue onto HW, which overshadows the fact that Finn has to take a life, but I don't think it's quite as simple as that. That was part of it for sure, but I also think this mental device frames the execution of Fern as an act that rescues Fern from the evil that was taking control of him and eroding his very essence. The trick works, and Finn slays the beast, and then promptly kisses HW after she teases Finn for being in love with her. For a second, I nearly expected Finn to wake up from a fantasy he was having after getting his head knocked too hard. But nope, the two are legitimately flirty to nearly an embarrassing level. I think my cheeks are getting flushed. Seriously though, this was cute, but it does make me ponder what sorts of internal changes Huntress Wizard has undergone since her and Finn last talked. After all, her parting words to him in Flute Spell were, But exceptional beasts like us cannot fall in love. That is the secret of ordinary people. Perhaps it's as simple as absence makes the heart grow fonder, or maybe Huntress Wizard is slowly becoming more content with her life off screen after her hang-ups with the Spirit of the Forest were put to rest. Or maybe the two are just simply having a brief heat of the moment fling without any serious attachments, and we'll see where things go in the future. For the time being, I think Finn is going to have to work on overcoming seeing Fern's face whenever he looks at HW. <coughs> That's quite the mood killer. The episode concludes with the reveal that Uncle Gumbald created Grumbo. Uncle G apparently accepted that Grumbo was a better name than Banana Meister. We also find out Uncle G's trying to get in better shape. But most importantly, of course, Uncle G has used the leftovers of the Emissary from Beyond to craft a brand new grass creature that Finn will probably have to face off against in the future. The Wild Hunt was truly a wild ride. For an episode that deals with such stark subject matter, it sure did manage to be a ton of fun. Which is probably how I was able to get away with dealing with such dark themes so brazenly. Finn is basically trying to get his groove back this episode, except his groove is the ability to kill things. Oh, Adventure Time, you will be dearly missed.